This is Elevate, an actively controlled rocket I made that can literally steer itself in any direction. After many failures, many months, and a whole lot of money, I think I've finally built something that just might work. Today, I'll be going over the hardware, and in the next episode, the magic that keeps it flying straight. But what even is an actively controlled rocket? It's exactly how it sounds. You're actively adjusting to steer the rocket in the desired direction, similar to how you actively steer a car. This is opposed to passive stability, which is basically built-in stability. An example of this is the pendulum. No matter where you drop it, the pendulum will naturally always end in the down position. And the reason I'm making Elevate has to do with my ultimate goal, catching a rocket just like SpaceX. This is a very difficult problem, so I'm building Elevate to nail the basics first. To pull this off, I need five key items. One, a propulsion system. Two, a way to steer. Three, the avionics or the brains. Four, a way to recover it. And five, a way to mesh it all together. Let's start at the bottom with the propulsion system. Obviously, this is important because without a way to go up, it's not much of a rocket, is it? There are three main ways this is done. One, liquid propulsion. This is the most common form of propulsion you've seen. Starship, Falcon, and the Saturn V are all examples of rockets with liquid propulsion. You get finer control, but it's also very complicated, expensive, and dangerous. Two, solid propulsion. This typically gives you less control. However, it's very accessible at the hobby scale. All SE's rocket motors are examples of solid propulsion. And three, a mix of the two, or hybrid propulsion. This is less complex than a full liquid system, but still much more complex than solid rocket motors, at least at the hobby scale. Given the immense cost and time, money, and number of fingers when it came to liquid and hybrid propulsion systems, I decided on solid propulsion. Specifically, the SE's F-15, which strikes a great balance between thrust, cost, and reliability. With propulsion sorted, now we need a way to aim it. Now, there are a number of different ways you can approach this, such as aerodynamic control, where you manipulate the airflow, or a reaction control system, which uses a network of small thrusters. But by far, the most simple at this scale is TVC, or thrust vector control. This is a technique where you can angle the thrust to create a side force that allows you to steer the rocket. It's great because it works independent of speed, which just means it generally works the same stationary and fast, and the math is relatively simple. All you need to know is the angle of the thrust and the amount of thrust, and then you can do some simple trick to get your forces. Note, TVC does need thrust to work, so no thrust, no steering. My previous design for this was the main source of failure in my last flight because of some sloppy connections. So this time I made sure to beef it up. I then printed it on my new Bamboo H2S in PET CF, which is also much stronger and more temperature resistant than the PLA I used before. The thrust itself is actually directed by gimbling the entire rocket motor using two of these metal geared servos. One for the inner, and one for the outer. If you want to get your hands on this and get early access to the content I make, check out my Patreon. This also supports the channel which is very appreciated. Now for the brains, or avionics bay. This is what holds all the electronics that sense and respond to the rocket state. In a larger rocket, you might see a more distributed system, but because of the scale I'm working at, it's much simpler to just have a single location. At the core sits Maverick, my custom flight computer. Man, I wish you made a video about that. Lucky for you, I did. Check it out in the description. This was a PCB I designed, built, and tested over the past months, and so far it's worked out pretty well. Speaking of PCBs, if you're at all interested in making your own, I would highly recommend JLC PCB. JLC PCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering engineers to develop projects efficiently. I used their services for my very first flight computer, EVA, and it turned out really well. 
The design was extremely tight as a result of a dense chip I was using, but I ran into no issues getting it made and assembled, and it worked nearly perfectly on my first flight. All I had to do was upload my Gerbers and I instantly got a quote. $7 is crazy value. Right now, you can get 1 to 8 layer PCBs for just $2, and even lower prices for larger scale production. That's pretty nice. Okay, now that the builds are paid, back to making missiles. What? That's illegal? Anyways, on the lower end sits a lower antenna for live telemetry, which allows me to verify everything is working while sitting on the pad, and the battery and mount for a tiny Runcam split camera to record the flight. This will simply slide into the airframe and attach itself via a single retaining screw. Super happy with how this turned out. The camera will record on startup and is powered on and off using one of the pyro channels on Maverick. This is typically used for, you guess it, lighting things on fire, but it should still work for this. It's also power hungry as heck, so we really want to make sure it's not on for longer than needed. Ask me how I found out. All right, so I have the camera hooked up and I'm just gonna quickly test recording. Here we go. Ah, it just died. Whoops. At the very top sits another slot for a 7.4 volt twos battery and a pull pin switch that once pulled will enable the parachute ejection system and board power. I actually had to make the pull pin switch twice because the first time around I accidentally swapped the connections. Which sucked because I had just spent like 30 minutes putting it all together. Now for recovery. This is really important, unless you want a giant lawn dart. Yeah, no thanks. There are two main methods at this scale. One, landing the rocket, and two, using a parachute. Landing is a, a future problem, so for now I'm sticking to parachutes. The principle of this is relatively simple. You start by stuffing a parachute wrapped in a fireproof blanket into the parachute bay. And then you light a black powder ejection charge to force the parachute out of the rocket. Now we want to make sure the flame bits from our ejection charge don't destroy our flight critical hardware, so we will also have a bulkhead that sits in between our charges and the rest of the rocket. This has two sided lever nuts, one side for the pyro charge and the other for the avionics. This allows me to hook everything up on the avionics side beforehand, making for an easier and safer process on launch day. Then I can just snap it in and I'm good to go. This bulkhead also serves as our tie off point for the parachute. And the nose cone is connected to the same line via this eye bolt. As for exactly how I manufacture and ignite explosive charges, I start with the- Yeah, I think I'm gonna skip on that one. And finally, all of this is then mounted inside a 74mm cardboard airframe. The bottom section houses the rocket motor, the thrust tractor control system, and avionics. And the top section houses the parachute ejection system. These are then attached together via a coupler I epoxied into the upper airframe. Listen to me right now when I say 3D printed drill guides are a lifesaver. I used them for the first time on Elevate and it made lining everything up 10 times easier. I highly recommend. And now for the most important part, launching the rocket. Just kidding. Of course, the real most important part is painting the rocket because if you're not engineering for aesthetics, why are you even making it? This worked pretty meh, and I had to touch it up quite a bit, but overall I'm super happy with the results. If I were to do it again though, I would definitely use a different method. Once assembled, this bad boy stands about 0.8 meters tall, or 2.6 feet, and has a dry mass of around 700 grams, or one and a half pounds. With that, a launch is imminent and a software deep dive is next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next.